is Tate Novak, and I'm a grade 11 contemporary art student at ESA. This past summer, I was supposed to return to my camp to become a camp counselor. I was super excited to go. I'll get to see my camp friends, spend time in the woods, and almost just as important, I would get to escape the large amount of stress I had built up around myself when it comes to making art. You see, both of my parents are talented artists, and one of them is also the photography teacher at ESA. When you add, <laughs> when you add the fact that Mr. Barry, or Matt, has been a family friend for half my life, you may begin to see how fearful making art at ESA had become. I thought that I had something to prove to them, but most of all, I was terrified to disappoint them. The stress of disappointing others by making bad art had overwhelmed me for my entire grade 10 year. My solution in grade 10 to the amount of stress I was facing was to simply avoid making art altogether. So I'm sure by now you can see how I was pretty excited to finally get away from this scenario and have fun at camp. But within 24 hours of arriving at this summer home that I spent nine summers at, I dislocated my kneecap and had to return to Toronto. <laughs> Obviously, I was pretty upset. I was only at camp for about a day, and I, had a bra and I had a brace from my ankle to my thigh, so I was almost immobile. After a week of healing and me feeling sorry for myself, my mom proposed the idea that I join a painting class not far from where I live and try to get my mind off of camp. I decided to, to sign up for it and see what I, decided to sign up for it and see what I could do and hopefully like something I painted. I had no idea what to expect on the first day. I thought I might just be hanging out with some cool artists painting, but the class wasn't exactly what I expected. There were about six seniors with small canvases propped on easels <laughs> with painting pens. At first, I thought this was gonna be a disaster. I texted my mom, pick me up now. <laughs> no reply. So most of my class was about half a century older than me, and I would be there from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. with a room with no air conditioning while it was 28 degrees out, and I still had my crutches on wearing this big knee brace. On top of that, a bunch of these old women kept asking if they could draw me, and during breaks, they would offer me wine and cheese. <laughs> Both things I found unsettling. <laughs> Safe to say, my first impression wasn't very great, and I didn't expect much from the course. But little did I know, this was the perfect scenario for me. The people I thought were judging me weren't there, so it felt like I had no one to disappoint. These paintings I made didn't really mean anything to me, but instead it was about me trying to find myself as a painter. The course wasn't great, but the instructor was very open and supportive in providing me the time and space I needed to make art away from people that I thought were judging me. This went on for about a week. Sadly, for the rest of the summer, I didn't paint again. The reason why was just because I was having a great time hanging out with my friends. But my goal for grade 11 was to not waste it like I wasted my grade 10 year. I thought if I just stretched the canvas and started painting, I would be able to do something that, I, I would be able to do what I did over the summer. But sure enough, the stress and fear I had of disappointing my parents, peers, and teachers overwhelmed me and I could not do anything. It was about November when I finally made some art again for a photography assignment. Photography was never really my thing. It didn't give me the sense of clarity I got when painting. So my idea was to recreate my painting instead of photographs by using a scanner to scan objects and then manipulate the objects to look like paint strokes. The objects I used to scan were something I called my beautiful things. My beautiful things were something I used to collect as a kid from ages two to nine that varied from buttons, rocks, marbles, beach glass, and other things my younger self would be fascinated by. My beautiful things and the process of collecting each one represent an immense part of my childhood and played a part in shaping me into the person I am today. Once I manipulated these objects into paint strokes, I figured that the work needed something else. So I decided to look around my house to see if I could find anything that might be interesting to scan. What I found was on my mom's many paintings and decided to scan it and see what I could do with it. I didn't realize at the time, but after reflecting on the artwork I just made, I realized that by putting my artwork on top of my mom's paintings, I was able to take back control of my own art. Although this was a big step in me making art, it was the only step in me taking control of what used to control me. The use of Photoshop allows me to go back and fix any mistakes I made, so I can always quickly step back and change anything that is not working. 
This, w this way, I avoid the disappointment that I feel will come along with making any mistakes and my mistakes being witnessed. Next. I, still, I still have a lot of fear attached to making art, but this experience of creating meaningful work that I'm proud of is an important step. So I may start painting again, although this will be really hard for me and I'll probably start painting in private. It is an essential step for me to take control of what you can control me. Yeah. 